Identifying sediment and nutrient as major pollutants to the Great Barrier Reef. In 2008, the Australian Government committed 200 million over five years to improve water quality. Project Catalyst formed in partnership with NRMs, Coca-Cola and WWF, led by 19 innovative Mackaywit Sunday growers to deliver quantified results through funded scientific trials under this initiative. Project Catalyst, really when you look at it in our industry, it is the only platform where farmers can talk to farmers about farming issues in the whole of the sugar industry. There's no other platform like it. And when you get uh, the state government and the federal government looking over our shoulder, that gives me a sense of achievement. It's the networking component that gives us the ability to fine tune our innovation because it can be extremely costly to do it wrong. And growers are so smart, they're so innovative and every area is different too. So what's innovative in another area, we'll take components of that and build onto what we're doing here. It's just an amazing resource. Growers are very excited about um, the potential that they have with this program um, and they just want to explore different options that are on farm, something that they wouldn't typically do but with you know a, an agronomist or an extension officer that can help provide them some sort of pathway through the process. So it looks like quite a significant amount of the end that's available um, in the water is being taken up by the plant as, part, as, as a fertiliser essentially. And we recently, through the innovation grants in Catalyst, got our hands on a um, GW50 uh, groundwater nitrate sensor, which was developed by the Lincoln University in New Zealand. And it will give us real-time readings of uh, nitrate levels in the underground. Approved Project Catalyst trials resulting in improved practices and broadly adopted by the industry include minimum and zero tillage, variable rate application, soil mapping, yield mapping and reduced nitrogen application rates in older returns. We've got a few growers here who've been very proactive and once other growers start to hear about that, uh, they start saying, well, I might give it a go. You know, I've got a couple of blocks that we've just harvested. We'll get some EM mapping done and we'll have a look and see what we can do. First was green cane harvesting, then we went into mound planting, we've actually gone into disc opener, cutting down our passes on our soils to the minimum that's needed to, to at least establish a crop. It's more to be efficient with your chemicals and your, and your fertilisers, uh, but what we're mainly looking at now is our, getting our soil structure correct, so we start with the with the ground, get, get it right, and then everything else should be flowed through. We shouldn't have to variable rate our fertilisers if we've got a constant paddock. The soils on the home farm here, generally speaking, are, are quite healthy and rich. We have used mill mud and gypsum and lime in the past. Um, we're putting in um, down the bottom where I think you went for a walk, we're actually going to put a cover crop of Ebony cowpea in to, to, to give body to the soil, but it's also because we do have an nematode problem down there. The object of the day normally for a farmer is what can I kill? Well, we're starting to think a bit different now, like what can we make grow? Uh, in the crops I've been using tillage radish, sun hemp, soy, uh, Japanese millet, um, yeah cowpeas, sorghum sudan grass, and yeah, like a radish, it'll be um, scavenging excess nitrogen that's in the soil. Um, other plants bring up phosphorus, you know, it's, yeah, other plants bring up zinc, you know, all plants have got a different role to play in nature. We've been yielding up to 30 tonnes per hectare biomass crops uh, in our fallow crops. Um, we're running mixed fallows. So we're mixing um, soybean, cowpea, lab lab, sun hemp, sunflowers and a number of other. And we, at the moment we've got some trial work through Project Catalyst to actually assess which species do what. And now we're looking at doing entirely different sorts of cover crops um, in entirely different ways than we've ever done before. So that's probably one of the biggest changes is our fallow management. We're now commonly up in the top few in the mill area now 
for our productivity. Uh, we achieved uh, 118 and change this year for one of our farms here in Bloomsbury, which was, yeah, we've done 139, was our previous best. So, testament to our, our new farming systems. In 2020, Project Catalyst growers have reduced their annual nitrogen rates. I am finding that knowledge is, is a power and it's a good starting base and, and that by learning what other people are doing, it gives you the confidence to maybe step out of your own comfort zone because I'll be honest, look I, I'm not a cane farmer, I didn't grow up as a cane farmer, I'm sort of, I've been brought in through marriage, um, so I'm learning as I go and what used to happen 20 years ago doesn't necessarily apply to farming practices today um, and it can't apply to farming practices today because of legislation. Um, as far as runoff, uh, well for a start you've got to go to the 1.8 or 1.9 metre system so that you've got less uncompacted ground and when you've got less uncompacted ground you've got more water going through the ground rather than running off and uh, when you've got better soil health, it's got a chance to hold onto that nutrient if it's got you know, a lot of fungi and stuff in the ground, it can filter it on the way through. The runoff water from our properties, if it has nutrients or mechanicals in it, I want to know because I'm wasting money. Simple as that. I'd like to see water monitoring on every property. Productivity will lead to profitability as well as the environment and any one of those three issues is missing, um, it's not on, it's not Project Catalyst.